Well, his name was Jason, and today is his birthday. What? What? We're filming. I don't even think that this took place on Friday the 13th, Matt. Yes, but we're filming this on June 13th, which is Jason's birthday. Oh. Are we? Yeah. Well, how about that? Good, good, good job. Good job planning that. Which is sort of ironic, because, uh... It's the only one in the series that doesn't actually have Jason in it. Oh yeah, that's right. It's some dude. It has Dream Jason. Yeah. It's just some guy that shows up. I don't even remember who... The, like, they take the, the mask off the character. I don't even know who that guy is. Well, they explained at the end. That, like, the fat kid that got murdered at the beginning? Yeah. It's his father. That wasn't a good twist. No. That was an awful twist. Yes. They, there was no build-up to it. There was no possibility in our minds that that could even be an option. Well, because the, fi- the ending of the last film and most of this film kind of make it like, Tommy's the killer. That's the secret. Tommy's the killer. Yeah. And then at the end, they're like, yep, Tommy's gonna be the new Jason, which he's not. Yeah, I figured as much. But, like, you had the twist there for you. Twist ending, it's Tommy. And then you just go for the shittiest explanation you could. It's some dude. It's... Okay, so this character that's only in this film, in one scene, gets killed by another dude at a crazy person institute. So his father... Who we never see. Who we've never met. Goes on a killing spree. I don't see any problem with that. I mean, honestly, that's that's just good screenplay writing 101 right there. They didn't, they didn't even show him killing, like, the dude who killed his son. Because that dude went to jail and I don't think was seen for the rest of the movie. Yeah. At least Mrs. Voorhees was justified. She went out and killed all the people that killed her son. Well, not really. Like, she, she killed okay. all the camp counselors who were present. This guy didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. This is totally supposed to be like a Mrs. Voorhees moment where it's like, oh, I need revenge for my son. And, you know, they, I think that that's what they're trying to draw a parallel to. Yeah. But they don't do it well. No. Um, also, the movie's dumb. The movie's really bad. It's just, it's bad, man. It's bad. Don't say. Like the worst one so far, honestly. It's... You know, you've got overacting, underacting, don't give a shit acting, bad lines written. There, there was one line in the movie that was like, crap my ass. <laughs> and that was supposed to be like a serious moment. In context, one dude's like, hey, I gotta go take a crap. And the other dude's like, crap, crap my, my ass. ass. But, by the way, I'm totally going to use that from now on in everyday conversation. That's gonna be that's gonna be my catchphrase. Get that on a t-shirt. Merch. Merch for, for Matt Presents for the I'll, month of Halloween Halloween. I'll I'll make it Bad the Bully's new catchphrase. Do it. <laughs> just be like just shows up. If oh no, it's Bad the Bully. Crap my ass. And instead of saying up top. <laughs> oh man. I'd do it. <laughs> like, opens door. Crap my ass! Studio audience of... Applause. <laughs> applause. Yeah, the only, the only really fun part of the movie was there was this crazy lady and her son who didn't like the loony hospital, so... Fuck them. Yeah, they were assholes, but still, they were... It was fun to watch them. They, you it was could fun to watch them die. Yes, that was true. But, you know, just... You could tell they were putting way too much effort into their performance, but they didn't know where to put that energy. So they just put it somewhere in every scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's the best way I can describe it. They, they, they put a lot of energy into their performance. They just didn't know where to put it. Um, oh, God, I feel like there was something else. Oh yeah, because it takes place at a mental institute, which is also where 
Nightmare on Elm Street 3, which came out the same year as this took place, except I haven't uploaded that video yet. Shh, don't worry about it. You're not supposed to know. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 is so much better. Is it? Yes. I haven't seen it. You won't let me see it. He's, he's, he's keeping me from seeing it. You can, like, show up. We're watching some more Saturday. I'm down. Cut this, cut this part. <laughs> Anyways. Don't see it. It's, it's, that's a bad movie. The, okay. 12 out of 10, that was a cute doggo. Was there a doggo in this There movie? was a doggo in this movie. There was a doggo in the last movie. Was there a doggo? I, well, no, because you said that that's a good pupper in the movie while we were watching it today. I think I was just talking to my actual dog. No, you were saying something to, about the dog on screen. There was a dog in the last movie who yeah. jumped out a window. Gordon. Gordon. What a badass. D did he ever live? Did Is Gordon okay? Ooh, he jumped out a window. I don't know what happened after that. He just ran He's off. He's like, he and Paul are living happily somewhere in the woods right now. <laughs> well, no. Paul came back as a different Paul. Oh yeah, they have two characters named Paul. And it was brought to my attention, oh, well, that's not a, that's not a bad thing, because, you know, Paul is a common name. It is... It is when you have control over what your characters' names are going to be. You don't just name two characters the same thing, one movie after another, and expect everything to be fine. Yeah, and since Paul's ending was left ambiguous... Could totally be the same person. But it's not. Don't see that movie. Well, maybe see part six. We haven't watched part six yet. Oh, it's a double feature. Okay. Maybe part six will be good. I doubt it. See you tomorrow. Alright. No, tomorrow will be Friday the th uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Life is just a wheel.